Hello, friends, and welcome to another WSIV Truth Matters with Joe Machado on this uh, not-so-nice Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we are supposed to be into the spring season, but um, the old guy upstairs seems to want to play a little bit with us, make us wait a little bit longer. Anyway, um, I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> and uh, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a subject that may seem to be uh, somewhat trivial, uh, but it's not. It's actually very important. And that's the uh, subject of your WSIB case file and how that file is composed, um, what is documented in the file, and more importantly, how you can access the file and review it so that you are familiarized with um, decisions that have taken place in your claim, uh, what information was used in making those decisions, uh, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so a file is made up of uh, generally uh, five key components. Uh, so the first one would be correspondence. And in the correspondence section of a file, um, all of the decisions made by the WSIB uh, will be located in that section. Unless there have been any appeals in your case, in which case there will be a section labeled appeals. Um, any correspondence that takes place between the WSIB and a third party involved in your case or that has somewhat of an interest in your case, like your employer, for example, all of that documentation would be in the correspondence section. Uh, information relating to uh, long-term disability, for example, if you've applied for long-term disability or Canada Pension Disability, uh, Ontario uh, Disability Support Program, um, any dealings with other agencies that, um, that have anything to do with your, with your claim. All of that information would be in the correspondence uh, section. And I remember oftentimes going through a case with a client over the years and I would reference certain materials in, the, in their claim file and they had no idea the information was there uh, and why it was there. So it's very important to get a copy of your file and understand uh, how it's all put together. The next very important section is memos. And so that's basically where any interaction that is um, done within the scope of your claim or the, the claims management. Um, and that would be interaction between a, a case manager and yourself, a case manager and someone in, with your employer, a case manager with someone from within the WSIB, so one of their nurse consultants or medical consultants or return to work specialists or a payment specialist, uh, management. So that information is or should be contained in the memos. Um, and each memo is numbered so that there is a chronological order of activities along with the date to go along with it. So, and I'll get to why this is so important. So the next section of your file would be labeled medical. And in the medical section, um, all medical reports related to your claim should be in that section. So that would include the initial uh, medical reports from your doctor, the form eight to get the claim started any reports from any other treatment facilities for chiropractic, uh, chiropractic, physiotherapy, acupuncture, any tests that you've had, any specialist uh, appointments that you've had. Um, all of that information should be in that section of the file, including uh, reports from a uh, WSIB specialty clinic that you were required to attend. Uh, that medical should be in that section of the file as well. So pretty much every single piece of medical information relating to your case should be in that section. 
The uh, next section is forms. And generally it's very small uh, and it's made up of the form seven, which is the employer accident report. That's the form that's submitted to the WSIB within three days of your accident. And if it's not submitted within three days, the employer is subjected to fines. The uh, form six, which is the worker report of injury, uh, that would be the form that you complete and submit to the WSIB. And then form eight, which is the medical report, which would be done in most cases by the family doctor. Those are generally the three forms that are in that section. Sometimes the WSIB will put functional abilities forms in there. They shouldn't be in that section. They should be in the medical section, uh, but sometimes that does happen. The next very important section in your file and perhaps one of the most important is the one dealing with work reintegration. So return to work activities. And um, all of the documentation pertaining to uh, return to work efforts, work reintegration, uh, any activities with a, um, a return to work specialist, uh, any retraining reports, uh, vocational rehabilitation assessments, or psychovocational assessments, which are generally done to help identify some suitable uh, uh, occupations. All of that information, everything pertaining to return to work should be in that section. And then lastly, um, if there have been any appeals in your case, there should be a section labeled appeals and, um, and any decisions and any appeal related activities should be documented in that section. Now, if you have a small file and it's a hundred, maybe a couple hundred pages, this may not be so important. Although I believe that having things organized is important and I'll explain why for obvious reasons anyway. Uh, but if you're looking at a file that's 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pages, um, and I've reviewed many, many, many of those over the last 30 years, then uh, understanding the makeup of the file is uh, very important. Because your file in some ways, for those who are experienced, kind of reads like a book. And when I'm going through a file and doing uh, one of our WSIB case audits for uh, one of our members at WSIBsettlements.com, um, oftentimes information that isn't where it's supposed to be, and then I look at other areas in the file and it's not there, uh, tells me that there's information that's missing for some reason. And oftentimes information that's missing uh, could be a key to the puzzle. So when you're going through a file and you're looking at uh, addressing a particular issue, let's say loss of earnings benefits for a specific period of time, and you're looking for full LOE for that period of time, and then you're going through the file to look at elements of those five key areas I talked about, to support the argument, to illustrate why or where the information is there to support your inability to work for that period of time. Being able to access that information uh, relatively easily and being able to draw from those various sections to put forward your argument not only saves you time and effort, but also the person who's going to be making a decision. Um, if you're not experienced in dealing with these matters, it can take you hours and days to go through a file and try to make sense of it. And it shouldn't be that way, but it is. And I think for many respects uh, on purpose, because I think that oftentimes information is duplicated unnecessarily. And 
if people paid attention to the facts and what's there, rather than try to make assumptions based on what they think that isn't there, uh, the decision-making process would probably be much easier and the result would be much more positive for the worker. Being able to um, argue a case and whether it's me as a, as a, uh, as a worker advocate, uh, although I don't handle cases anymore, uh, but if I'm doing a, a WSIB settlements uh, case on it. I'm looking for every single decision that's been made in your claim, why those decisions were made, what information existed in the file to support those decisions. Did the WSIB follow the law and policies pertaining to those specific issues? And if it's not properly laid out that A, that the WSIB had the necessary information and evidence to make a decision, and B, that the WSIB did not consider the law and policies applicable in that particular situation, then I will be able to identify that and put together an argument that is based on facts and law because those are the only arguments that matter. And oftentimes, uh, when I'm putting together the action plan that goes along with, with our report for that audit, and I itemize what steps need to be taken. First of all, I explain benefits that weren't paid, that should have been paid. And then I itemize the steps that should be taken to pursue those benefits and illustrating the law and policy that authorizes those benefits, then to argue the case and to prepare submissions in support of the case is pretty simple. And it provides for a good roadmap for anyone to follow to successfully argue the case. So understanding the makeup of a file, what's in there, why it's there, and as equally important information that's missing that could have a crucial impact uh, on the outcome of the case or whatever issue you're pursuing um, is key. And it also makes it very difficult for the person making the decision to go against it and compels that person to provide an alternate argument and an alternate policy or piece of legislation to accept their position as opposed to yours. So it's an important uh, exercise in um, preparing a case, understanding all of the factors that can be considered. And so one of the things that I've always talked about in my, my uh, videos is to avoid at all costs dealing with WSIB personnel on the phone one-on-one. -on -one. And this is based on my own opinion, based on over 30 years of dealing with these people. You never know what they're going to put down on a memo. And if it's accurate, if it's an accurate reflection of the conversation that you had and not having a copy of your file and understanding how it all works, you won't have an opportunity to refute that. And it may be that down the road at a hearing, somebody's going to ask you a question and you're going to be kind of left out to lunch. So. It's important to get a copy of your file. You have a right to it. It's important to understand how it's laid out, or it's important to have someone go through the file, review it for you, someone who understands the laws, put together a game plan to help you address unresolved issues or to confirm for you 
that certain issues, there's no point in pursuing them because it's not within the, uh, within the law. And that's one of the reasons why our uh, WSI or uh, WSIB case audit is so popular and we've been doing a lot of them because people want that information so that they understand where they can go from there. Uh, but most importantly, if you absolutely have to be caught up in a call with someone from the WSIB and you couldn't arrange a, th a conference call to have someone you know on the line taking notes, then when you're finished with that call, make the notes of what took place right after you finish because it's fresh in your mind, date the memo and upload it directly to your WSIB file. So it's there, it's on record and nobody can tamper with it. Nobody can touch it so that your word isn't being misconstrued. and or used against you down the road. All right, friends. So that pretty much uh, takes care of this uh, short video that I wanted to do. Uh, and I'll leave you with uh, Mr. Smiley's tip of the day, which is, I already alluded to it. And that is, if you have a conversation with someone at the WSIB regarding any issue pertaining to your claim file, when you're done that conversation, write down word for word what was discussed, date it, and immediately upload it to your case file. And do that through your account. Don't fax it in, don't mail it in, upload it. Because once it's on your file, nobody can touch it. It's there for posterity. It's there to help you in the event that you need it. All right, friends, as always, Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and for sharing my videos. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you. Uh, it's free to subscribe. So if you subscribe to the channel, it'll help me out in building the channel and reaching as many people in Ontario as I possibly can and sharing over 30 years of experience in dealing with the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal. And uh, all the information is free. So hopefully there'll be something there in one of my videos that I can that can be of help to you, all right? And for those of you who need help with your claim, please visit wsibsettlements.com. We can help you regardless of whatever issue you have with the WSIB, uh, we can help you. All right, friends, and as always, and until the next time. Take care.